Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Power of Food podcast, episode four. We're your hosts, nutritionist Leah Barrick and Stacey Seslowski. And today's podcast we are super excited about because we are talking all about healthy eating on a budget. So we are going to have tons of tips and tricks for you that are really accessible and practical tips that you can implement right away and help yourself eat healthy on a budget because a lot of times people think eating healthy has to be super expensive and is far out of reach and all of that. So what do you think about that, Stacey? I love it. I love this topic. And I think maybe that our listeners might find it interesting to know that you and I don't really plan or we don't really talk about our topics in advance. So I feel like I'm going to get to learn a lot from you um, because I don't know what you're planning on you know, adding. So I'm excited to, to get some good ideas from you as well. Right back at you. I always love talking to, you know, other health professionals and nutritionists, especially because we deal with this daily and we deal with, you know, helping people create these lifestyle changes. And our job is to break down the barriers and make it easier for people. So not only figuring out, you know, what the best diet is and what they should be eating, but also how to do that and how to implement that. And that's a huge part of this. So I, I love making it easier for people. And especially now, you know, with the current climate, people are losing jobs and all of that. It's so important to take care of your health, of course, but we also want to do it in a way that's budget friendly. So tons of tips and tricks. I'm sure we already mentioned there's going to be some overlap in kind of our list, but I'm super excited to hear what you have to say as well. Um, but I'll go ahead and jump in with the first one that I love to tell people. So this one is pretty straightforward and might seem, you know, pretty obvious, but cooking at home is so much less expensive than buying food prepared out. And so if you focus on spending the majority of your food budget at the grocery store rather than at the restaurant, you're going to spend so much less money. And then also, you're also going to eat so much healthier because a lot of these restaurants are adding excess sugar, unhealthy oils, processed ingredients, all of that. So you're really getting a double whammy with this one. You're going to spend less money. You're going to eat healthier, all of that. So that is, you know, my, my go-to cook at home. There's so many resources online. I know you and I both teach cooking classes to people. So that helps you incorporate all the healthy foods. We always talk about and how best to cook them and all of that. And so even if you haven't cooked before, you know, now is such a great time to get going with it. And kind of similar and related is meal prepping. So meal prepping is essentially creating large meals ahead of time and then having them ready to go for the week or you can also throw the food you know into the freezer and that's great because it's less expensive and you always have food ready to go so you're going to avoid that last minute you know call for delivery or you know you're in the checkout line and you're starving and you don't have any food at home and you grab some stuff so you're going to end up spending less in the long run if you're doing meal prep and cooking at home and all of that. So that's kind of a one and two um, choice that I always have people implement. What do you think? Do you ever do meal prep or have people, your clients do meal prep, Stacey? Yes, absolutely. I ha did have that on my list. And um, just also a part of that is when you prep and when you plan in advance, then when you go to the supermarket, you can you know exactly what you need and just sticking to that list is really helpful so rather than sort of like ran going to the supermarket and randomly picking you know all kinds of different foods and hoping you can you know somehow mix it together in the right way once you get home if you really go to the supermarket with your meal plan in mind and just sticking to that list not only will you avoid buying, you know, making, um, un, uh, you know, uh, random purchases, but you'll also likely buy more healthy foods because you'll write on your, you know, it's easier to keep a list of healthier options um, instead of adding on things like chips and snacks and high sugar foods and prepackaged foods. If you make a healthy list to start and you plan it out and then when you go to the supermarket, just stick to that list. 
that's really help, help, helpful as well as just not going to the supermarket with an empty stomach. <laughs> so just go in totally. bed and satisfied so you can really think clearly with your mind and not with your stomach um, as <laughs> you're shopping. <laughs> that's so true. Um, definitely help keep you to your list and not make those added purchases that are more expensive and less healthy. Totally. I'm so glad you said also going fed because <laughs> I am someone, if I go to the grocery store hungry, it's a lost cause. Yes. Like I should not go. <laughs> and I intentionally won't go when I'm really hungry because I know I'll end up buying so much more than I anticipated. And you know, then you end up getting the pre-made food, which is always more and all of that. So such a good point that a lot of people don't think about. Yep. Another one that I had on my list is, you know, we talk a lot, a lot about trying to choose organic foods because organic fruits and vegetables have less pesticides and, um, you know, let, they're just a healthier, they're grown in a healthier way. Um, so one thing that I recommend is there's a website called EWG. Dot org, and we can write that in the notes afterwards, but ewg.org. And they actually have done research on which fruits and vegetables are best and most important to get organic because those are the fruits and vegetables when not organic, they have the most pesticides. So that group is called the Dirty Dozen because that's the group you really want to buy organic. And then there's um, a group of fruits and vegetables that when they tested them, even the non-organic version was not excessively high in pesticides and that group is called the clean 15. So if you're trying to make the best choices for your family and pick and choose where you want to invest in organic foods, you might want to look at the dirty dozen and clean 15 lists that are written on the ewg.org website so that you know that there are certain vegetables like that have really thick skins or shells that they they didn't they weren't grown organically but they are not packed with pesticides so it's okay to spend a little less on those vegetables and buy them non-organic whereas some fruits and vegetables are just they are much better off when you buy them organically Totally. Yeah, that was also on my list. One of my favorite yeah. resources to tell people, they also have an app that you can, you know, if you're at the grocery store, pull it up on your phone so you don't have to memorize the, the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. But just some examples of the Dirty Dozen that you do always want to get organic are things like strawberries, spinach, kale, grapes, cherries, tomatoes, and potatoes. Potatoes are a big one that I find, you know, a lot of people consume a lot of potatoes and they're one of the most heavily sprayed with pesticides. So it's really important to get those, um, get those organic. And then like you said, the clean 15, you don't necessarily need to. So anything with a hard shell or that you peel or anything like that. One of them is cauliflower that kind of surprises a lot of people. Also broccoli, mushrooms, cabbage, avocados. Those are things that, you know, are great to get and you don't have to get organic. So I'm so glad you brought that one up. That is a great one. Um, kind of going off that, still talking about shopping, knowing where to shop is a really great tool. So Trader Joe's, for example, is a grocery store where if you have one near you, you're super lucky because they have so many organic products that are so affordable. The thing about Trader Joe's that I always like to warn people is that they do have a lot of processed foods that are just packed with unhealthy ingredients. So definitely go for the whole foods there, but their prices are unbeatable. It's really great. And also along those same lines, Whole Foods 365 is a knockoff of Whole Foods. That's less expensive options. The only problem with that is there's a lot fewer of them. So if you don't live near one, it might be a little trickier. Other things are Costco. Costco is amazing for buying in bulk and all of that, especially if you have a big family, you know, that's going to make it way more affordable. And all of these places, you know, they're picking up on the fact that people want to eat healthier. And there's this movement to eat organic and eat whole foods. So they're having and providing a lot more of 
what the consumer wants. So you'll find organic food at Costco. You know, it's it's great. It's awesome. I love seeing that. You'll find avocado oil, all of that. Um, other ideas are CSAs or community supported agriculture. So that's a program that's really great to support your local farmers and it's more cost effective than buying the food at the grocery store. So if you want to find one of those in your area, you can just Google CSA near me and you're really likely to find them. Again, those are growing as well. And then there's also online stores like Thrive. Thrive is one of my absolute favorites and that's an online store that sells a ton of organic and healthy products at heavily discounted prices and then ships them straight to your door. So especially in the middle of a global pandemic, that is great. And there is a membership fee, but once you pay that fee, I believe most of their products are about 25 to 50% off. And they have a lot of stuff. Like I remember I was a Thrive member a while ago, a few years ago, and then stopped for a little bit and then just recently became one again. And I was looking through all the products and was shocked at, you know, the diversity they have and all the options and they have so much of what I like. So usually when I go grocery shopping, I'll, you know, know where the best prices are for each thing, note it, and then go to each store or order online and get what I need at the best price. So it does sometimes take a little bit of planning, but it'll be worth it in the long run. Yeah, you mentioned my favorites. I swear by Trader Joe's and Thrive Market. I love. I always recommend, especially with Thrive Market, you'll notice that when you look at the ingredient lists on a lot of their foods, that their ingredients are just all whole foods. You know, there aren't a lot of preservatives and additives and the ingredients that you can't pronounce on their foods. Those are really my favorites. Um, another one that I really like is Misfits Market. Have you ordered from mm. them? Is that like Imperfect Produce similar? Yes. Like, yeah. Really perfect. Like they're really not that off from perfect. And right. you can custom. So Misfits Market, for those of you who are, don't know, it is another one where you um, order a box and it can it comes in delivered to your home. You can choose the size of the box. You can choose if you want one every single week or every other week. Um, they're actually a lot less expensive than I would expect expect because they are organic. Um, you can customize the box um, or you can just let them randomly choose, which I always being the type of like sort of I hate to say it, controlling person that I am. <laughs> I like to customize it, but in the beginning, when it wasn't customized, I actually was so pleasantly surprised at being like getting these newer or types of vegetables that I don't normally cook with and having to try to figure out, you know, what is the best way to cook it? And then also just getting, you know, vegetables and fruits that you're not used to is actually really healthy because you're adding diversity to your diet that when you're you know you get stuck in a rut sometimes and you eat the same foods every single day so when they choose these random fruits and vegetables you know you're getting new nutrients and vitamins and minerals that maybe you don't normally get so that's one that I love and I also love that you mentioned farmers markets um, some of my recommendations for farmers markets is to try to negotiate with the um, farmers because even especially if you go towards the end of the day, they might have to get rid of whatever they're not selling. So if you go towards the end when the farmers market is closing, whoop, you just disappeared on me one sec. Oh. Um, then there you go. Um, so if you go with, towards the end of the day when when it's closing, then they might be more willing to just give you like a little a little less expensive um, produce. So that's something that I always recommend to people with farmers markets. Um, yeah, such a good point. I the going towards the end of the farmers market. That's one that I find a lot of people don't think about doing, mm -hmm. and it's true because if they just end up you know with these huge produce piles and they don't have anywhere to put them or whatever, they're way more likely to, you know, want to sell them to you mm -hmm. for less expensive than have them go to waste or anything like that. So that's a really great point. And I am similar to you on the, the boxes, you know, choosing whether you want to pick what's in your box or be surprised. I also love the idea of getting, you know, different produce that you don't normally get. And I have done that. And it's fun to find different recipes and, you know, figure out how to incorporate those foods. And again, 
again, like you mentioned, our gut microbiome loves diversity. So that's an awesome way where if you struggle with getting new produce or new types of food into your diet, that can kind of force you a little bit to do that. But yeah. also you can choose, you know, if you like to plan out your recipes or you're doing meal prep and you need to know what's in your box, you also have that option, which is really nice. Yeah, exactly. And along the lines of your, um, I think you mentioned, you know, buying things in bulk. Um, so I would also recommend there's a website called bulksupplements.com and you can actually get um, spices and seasonings and things like that in like much bigger packages than the normal like like tiny sort of um, containers that spices come in and I just I'm one of those people that adds a thousand spices to my food <laughs> probably too many and I probably should just like you know pick and choose each day but I just sort of add everything and um so getting bulk supplements or going to that website, you might find that it's a lot less expensive to buy your spices in much bigger packages. So yeah, interesting. I, I haven't heard about that one. And I also do, so I like to get my spices in the bulk section, like at the grocery store, because right. then you can actually get the amount you need. And, you know, if some people don't go through their spices that quickly, mm -hmm. they actually lose their nutritional value after yeah. I think like three months, like a, a really short amount of time. And I think we're all guilty of having, you know, the spice yeah. in your cabinet that's been there for four years. years. And you're <laughs> like, I'm going to just use this in this recipe. Yeah. It probably won't be bad for you, but it also probably won't be one of the nutritional value. Yeah, right. so <laughs> if you use a lot of spices, that's awesome because they do add up and they definitely are the most expensive when you get them in, you know, like the standard small-ish glass jar at the supermarket, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but if you're only using a little bit for a recipe and you you know, aren't gonna use it again for who knows how long, then using the bulk section where you actually just measure out what you need is so much less expensive also, and then you won't end up wasting it as well. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of just buying bulk in general, I absolutely love doing that. And so what I'll do is I'll just like get as much as I need in the bulk section, bring it home and then transfer it into mason jars or glass containers. So it doesn't go bad and it looks pretty on your counter, all of that. And you're going to end up spending a lot less because if you look at the unit price on the, um, like the sale price on the bulk versus something that's pre-packaged, nine out of 10 times is gonna be less expensive per unit. So that's usually per ounce or per pound. And so the lower that is, the better deal you're getting. And so just notice, you know, next time you're at the grocery store, look at those unit prices and see in the bulk versus something that's already in a container, you'll probably end up getting a way better price if you do it in bulk. Yeah, I totally agree. And then the other thing is also if you buy things in, uh, or, and this is not even actually just towards bulk, but just in general, not wasting any part of your vegetables. So like the, the stem of broccoli or, you know, even the ends and the edges, I, I keep um, in my freezer like packages of edges and stems and all these random parts of onions and um, fruits and vegetables that I know I'm not going to eat, but I can easily throw into water. And when I'm making a bone broth or something, a soup, um, having those edges are so full of nutrients still. And as long as you keep them in the freezer, they won't, you know, lose those nutrients. Um, so just making sure not to have any waste is really great. Even when you have leftovers at night from dinner, you know, keep it all together in a container. And then the next night, add more to it, add rice to it, add, you know, other things and just making sure not to have waste, I think is also you can literally make a whole nother meal out of, out of some other waste sometimes, you know? Totally. Yeah. Reducing food waste is so important. And I think a recent estimate found that Americans waste the equivalent of 165 billion dollars every year just on food waste. Wow. food waste so that's insane yeah because a lot of these foods like you said you can use the vegetables and use it in a bone broth or even the chicken carcass if you get like a rotisserie chicken mm -hmm. or you make a whole chicken saving those bones yeah. and making bone broth which is one of yeah. the most nutrient dense foods there is that's huge yeah. some other ones i love are you know broccoli stems slicing them up really thinly and making broccoli chips out of them 
them, um, that kind of thing, you know, so just getting creative and reusing food and then saving leftovers, incorporating them, you know, keeping tabs on what's in your fridge. So, you know, when things are going to be going bad and what you need to use up and all of that is really helpful also. Yes, I totally agree. Um, and so uh, the other thing I, that I wanted to mention is to buy seasonal. Mm -hmm. So like knowing what is in season because stores will jack up the price for foods that are out of season, harder to get locally. So they have to spend more money to get foods that are, um, you know, not in season. And so the foods that are our season are in season are usually less expensive because they're more accessible to the store. The other mm -hmm. thing is that it's actually healthier to eat you know, foods that are in one season, eat those foods. And then in a different season, eat different foods because, you know, that's a way to make sure that you're having that nutrient diversity, um, getting different nutrients each season. And also in season, those foods are just, they're from more local places. They're more, um, they haven't been sent all over the world to get to you. So they're going to be more fresh and they're going to be more, the nutrients are gonna be more bioavailable and more dense than foods that have traveled very far to get to you and are out of season. Totally, because a lot of people don't realize this, but the second that produce is picked, it starts to lose nutritional value. So the sooner that you can eat your food after it's picked from the field or the tree or whatever it is, the more nutritious it will be, which is why, you know, going to the farmer's market and getting the food that the farmer picked that morning is so much more nutritious than buying bananas from the supermarket that were shipped from South America and all of that. So love that you said eating in season and also, you know, Something else I love to do is when something's in season, it's more likely to be on sale. So take advantage of those sales and then freeze it. So for example, I was just at the grocery store and they had an awesome sale on blueberries. So I stocked up and put half of them in my freezer for smoothies and all of that. So it's really helpful to do that. I also do that a lot with meat. So salmon was on sale the other week and I just got a bunch of salmon and now it's just in my freezer for when I'm ready to use it and it lasts for so long and pretty much I, I never spend full price on salmon because you know take advantage of those sales when they're there and then also take advantage of sales on things that you might not normally eat so again an excuse to increase some diversity in your diet maybe a new kind of fish or a new vegetable or whatever might be on sale and so that's just another excuse to increase the diversity of your diet yeah so that's a really good point the yeah. other thing is always focusing on, you know, buying whole foods. So if you buy packaged foods, it's actually more expensive than buying whole foods. And you also want to avoid buying like pre-cut and prepared foods because they upcharge that a lot. You're paying for the convenience of that. So if you're trying to save money, you know, buy the whole apple instead of the cut up apple example is like that. Do you have any other examples like that, Stacey? Yeah, absolutely. You can actually choose um, like less expensive cuts of meat mm -hmm. and cook them slower in sauces instead of buying the most expensive piece that you that you know tastes amazing when you just like sear it, you know. But like mm -hmm. you can spend less money on less expensive types of meat and slow cooking is actually healthier for you because you're not getting that char on the outside of the meat that is damaging and can be carcinogenic. So instead, when you slow cook meats and you cook them in moisture, they are not getting that char and they're healthier um, versions of those foods. So just trying to choose um, like less expensive types of meats are really, really good. Totally. Option. Yeah. I'm so glad you brought that up because even like grass fed, grass finished organic beef, ground mm -hmm. beef is, I mean, it depends on where you go, but $7 a pound. I've even seen it for $6 a pound sometimes. And also chicken drumsticks versus like chicken breast or chicken thigh are super affordable. And then, you know, like canned fish, canned wild salmon, for example, I know Trader Joe's has that for super affordable, best price I've seen. And then eggs, eggs are one of the most nutrient dense sources of protein protein and so many nutrients in there and they're so affordable and they last again forever in your fridge. So if there's a sale, 
stock up on eggs, have them in your fridge ready to go for whenever. And you know, you're spending less and you're still getting the nutrients from that. Yeah, absolutely. I love all these ideas. And I just was about to say another one that you sparked in my mind and now I forgot it. Um, <laughs> I'll jump in. Also, I wanted to say, you know, legumes. So like lentils and chickpeas and black beans, if you tolerate them, they are a very inexpensive way to get protein in and they're packed with fiber and other nutrients. So, you know, that's a great one also to get in bulk. So I'll often get lentils in bulk and that kind of thing and just have them. They last forever on your counter. And then, you know, just make sure you soak them and prepare them properly so you digest them well. And that's another really, really affordable way to get some protein in and some healthy fiber as well. Well. Yeah, that I had I'd also, in addition to that, another just increasing sources of resistant starch. So resistant starch is like you said in beans, but also in potato and rice. Um, those are usually less expensive types of foods and they're a great way to, um, to extend leftovers. So if you have leftovers and you add your resistant starch like rice, potatoes, it's a great way to make sure you're not having, you're not wasting food and you're extending your meals and you're increasing the less expensive types types of foods and those are really healthy types of fiber as well. So that's a great one. And then totally. the one thing I say before was stop buying the junk food. So you're gonna right. spend, <laughs> you're gonna spend a little bit more maybe on getting like whole you know organic or grass fed meats and things like that. Um, use that as a substitute rather than in addition to your junk food and your, you know, snack, uh, unhealthy sort of like um, chips and high sugar foods and stuff like that. So, you know, we're, we're choosing one over the other rather than getting both. So that's another totally. Good idea. Yeah, that's <laughs> a good point. I'm glad you brought that up because we kind of jumped over that. But that's like number one, what to do exactly. Save your money. Don't buy the processed foods. And then also, you know, foods that you might buy that are already prepared, you can make those at home for a lot cheaper. So things like hummus and, you know, nut milk, salad dressing, pesto, granola, all of that, you can make at home. You can control exactly what's in it. So you can make it way healthier. And then it's also so much less expensive in the long run. So that's another one I love to tell people as well. Yeah. And then also buying frozen. So frozen fruits and vegetables, yep. it depends on the fruit and vegetable, but oftentimes it's less expensive, especially if it's not in season. And they're typically available in larger bags. So you can get like a big bag and the unit price, like we talked about before, is going to be lower. So that's a great way to have foods on hand as well for smoothies or whatever it's going to be. And then also related to what we were talking about in terms of nutrient loss over time, usually like frozen berries and that kind of thing, they're frozen immediately after they're picked. So they're actually more nutritious than, for instance, a berry that's shipped in from many states over or another country or that kind of thing. So that's a fun tip as well right. um, in terms of frozen foods and really taking advantage of those. Yep, exactly. And I had that too. And then the, the one with fresh fruits and vegetables is knowing how to um, store them so that they don't go bad on you. So like when I, I don't know what you do, but like for my green vegetables, my green leafy vegetables, or even any um, vegetables that I get in a bag that seem moist, I always open them up and put paper towel in there to keep them more dry because once they stay moist in a closed container, they are much more likely to go bad sooner. So for all of my green leafy vegetables or any or any really any a lot of my vegetables, I do wrap them with paper towel and try to dry them off to make sure that I extend their life as much as possible. Yeah, such a good point. I should probably do that. I don't do that, but it, I always think about it. I feel like I end up eating them so quickly. But yeah. in terms of kind of similarly herbs, so like when I get fresh yeah. cilantro and parsley, what I do is I actually chop off the very bottom and then put them in a cup with some water so that they stay moist and then just put the cup with the water and the herbs sticking out of them in my fridge and that makes them last so much longer. Yeah. It's really awesome. And then in terms of, you know, the moisture, making sure that especially with things like berries, you're only washing them right before you eat them. Yeah. So don't wash them right when you get home 
home and then stick them in the fridge and expect them to be okay unless you're gonna eat them right away. I always tell people just wash those right before you eat them because they are very fragile and you want them to last. Yes. Totally but right. other foods, like if you did want to wash when you get home, because I know some people do like doing that. So things like That's carrots right. or peppers. Yeah, like doing that kind of thing, that can save you time. But just make sure you let them dry before you put them yeah. back in the fridge. Yeah, exactly. So I'm getting, I have one more. Um, we'll okay, me too. <laughs> oh, perfect. My last one is just also to acknowledge that by investing, even if it is a tiny bit more expensive, which in the end, I really think it evens out if you cut back on, on buying all those junk foods and processed foods. But I just want to make, you know, help people acknowledge and be aware that even if it is a little bit more of an investment, you will be saving yourself so much money and, and, and just, um, you know, peace of mind and health and happiness later on that, if you know, it may be worth an extra, your extra investment now to really consider your health and happiness and that of your families as well. Absolutely. So important, you know, invest in yourself, pay for it now or pay for it later because exactly. the hospital bills of getting sick with chronic illness and all of that are way, way, way more than you're going to spend on eating healthier in the now. And then, you know, your quality of life is just going to be so much better as well. And then you're probably going to be more efficient at work and, you know, exactly. not have brain fatigue and all of these other things. It's like a domino effect. So it really is so important. And so, I really, really love that you just said that. And that would probably have been a good last one. But <laughs> I'll just go ahead and say the last one on my list, which was checking out. Well, first of all, if you can, I know not everyone can, but growing your own. So starting a little garden, mm -hmm. growing some herbs, you know, outside on your terrace, any of that. Like I said, I know everyone's living situation is a little bit different, but growing your own food is so affordable, of course. And then, you know, you get your hands dirty and you, you're investing in the process and it's, it's just a really cool thing and so also kind of going off of that if you don't have the capacity to do that getting involved in local farms work share programs where you can go work for a couple hours a week either you know in the field or helping them at the farmers market and then usually they'll pay you with like a huge box of produce and it's all organic and you know you played a role in creating that and helping them so that's a really great way to get some healthy local food for no money and just a little bit of time so that's another one I like to tell people as well yeah so I think this list do it <laughs> yeah <laughs> I think our list had a lot on there and that was a lot of, you know, actionable tips for people. And I hope that, you know, you, this helped everyone and there were some things on there that they haven't heard about and all of that. I think so for sure. Um, and just for our listeners, if there were any websites or, you know, um, ideas that we mentioned that you want to know more about, please comment and let us know. Um, you can reach me. My email is Stacy at heal from food.com. I think I have a little banner to show you. Um, and I am a um, functional nutrition dietitian. I am um, in Florida, but I also have a virtual um, online practice so I can meet with people from anywhere. So feel free to reach out to me. And my website is right there, www.healfromfood.com. And I'm also available on um, social media, heal from food. Awesome. Thanks, Stacey. My name is Leah Barrick, and you can find me at www.gracefunctionalnutrition.com. You can also email me at gracefunctionalnutrition at gmail.com, and I'm on social media also at gracefunctionalnutrition, and I am also accepting new clients. I am 100% virtual, so online, available, and yeah, like Stacey said, we'd love for you guys to reach out and comment. Let us know if any of these help you or if you have any you know that we missed we'd love to learn from you guys also if there's any cool tips that you have great nice to see you leah see you next you time. too stacy thanks you got it bye-bye